My first guest this morning served in the government of Zimbabwe as Minister of Local Government, Rural Development, and National Housing. He had previously served as Minister of Youth Development, Indigenization, and Economic Empowerment, and Minister of Environment, Water, and Climate. Mr. Sevia, welcome. Thank you very much, and congratulations, uh, uh, Doctor, on your latest uh, uh, progress that we have achieved now. Uh, you have done pr us proud. Wonderful. Thank you so much. How is the Christmas for you? We are getting ready for Christmas, obviously, again, as a background of uh, the COVID challenge. Uh, the region, the war world, as well as I think uh, the... We hope and pray that we'll let sufficient rains for agriculture this year. Wonderful. I hope it will be a good one and enjoyable. Let us get to uh, the issues of the day that we have. Uh, you have had vast experience serving in different portfolios of government. You were a member of parliament for 17 years, central committee member for 17 years, chairman of the defense and home affairs for five years, and member of the pan-African parliament and cabinet minister for three different ministries. You are uh, one of the very best person who has uh, a vast knowledge over the topic of working with the president, uh, Robert Mugabe. So if you can just briefly take me through the background, how did you get to know President Robert Mugabe and what kind of a person was he to you? Well, I got to know President Mugabe pretty well over the years, um, obviously firstly starting as uh, uh, just a young citizen in the country. Uh, during the war, uh, when we heard a lot about him, until independence, and when I started working in government, and eventually uh, rose through the party structures to become a leader of the young people, um, and later on, uh, appointed deputy minister of youth development and employment creation, promoted further to serve as minister of youth development, indigenization, and economic empowerment. I was reassigned to Ministry of the, uh, Water, Environment and Climate. Then my last station was Minister of Local Government Public Works and National Housing. And I want to make it very clear that uh, President Gabe was as human as anybody else. He was prone to mistakes like anybody else. But from a leadership point of view, uh, from what he did, and from the moment I served with him in cabinet, as well as in Politburo, where I served for over 17 years. He was an outstanding leader, a man with a very interesting grasp of issues, um, a nationalist, somebody who firmly believed that uh, we can build a better nation. Uh, he is one leader who also had so much time for young people, who wanted to see young people come up, uh, play a role in the development of the country, politically, economically, as well as socially. He has been a leader of um, projects and programs that transformed our country. And uh, throughout the service and working with him, I found him to be a very, very focused, disciplined, and intelligent leader. Uh, some people believe uh, that uh, after the 2013 elections, President Mugabe was uh, now too old to govern, was not effectively in control and check of cabinet and other sectors of government. Uh, and now considering how succession issues played out in 2017, uh, do you think that some cabinet ministers and officials in the party may have taken advantage of President Mugabe's old age to feather their own political interests? Well, certainly, um, when, wherever there are politicians, there's always political interplay. There will always be people who are eye for various opportunities. But suffice to say, President Mugabe's sterling leadership of uh, the GNU was, I think, something that convinced all in Sandro that he was actually very, very capable and would actually be able to lead the nation uh, going beyond 2013. I say so because in that very cabinet, cabinet of opposites, cabinet of uh, antagonistic parties, 
he was able to bring all people together. And it is a moment when we actually achieved a huge, uh, huge economic growth in the country. Our GDP grew. Uh, the unit that was achieved by the GNU government was as a result of the sterling leadership he provided. And going forward again, he did manage quite a number of uh, important pieces of legislation, especially in this case, the constitution. And you will see that our 2013 constitution is probably one of the best that uh, we have in Africa, probably also in the world. But suffice to say, um, there will obviously be people who have ambitions, who want to take over, who will seize on that opportunity. But the party took a decision that he was to lead us, he was to be the candidate for 2013. And mm -hmm. this was a unanimous position. He was probably the safest pair of hands to usher in the ZANU uh, PF political party after the GNU government. Do you have any occasions that you recall from your time of service where you can say you disagreed with the president, but he handled it carefully such that he did not erupt into something uh, of a big political rift that could have affected the administration in your ministries and in government broadly? I wouldn't call it disagreements. Um, President Gabe, I think I would say he's a lead, he was a leader who was prepared to understand and listen to the other point of view, okay? We had a number of issues and I can raise this, um, we discussed about the land question and to do especially with the title days. And you'll say, well, what are you talking about? Does this mean that uh, we are going to let the country or the land go back to into the hands of colonial powers or individuals who will then basically subvert what we've done. Say so, no, Your Excellency. To the contrary, we must use this as an opportunity to further deepen the empowerment process of our people, for them to be able to access resources and produce whatever they are producing on their farms, the production will grow. He will then come back and say, okay, assure me, how will the legislation therefore protect our people as well as protect the ownership that we have achieved to date? And then we'll go forward to proffer some ideas and you'll say, well, fine. I think I've taken note of your view. Um, let's further discuss this matter. He was a leader who would uh, give you a chance to put a different point of view. And if you had a better view, you mm -hmm. would still accede to that and say, I think we've had a good discussion. Some of the views that have been expressed by the comrades here, comrades so on, so on and so forth, are important. Let's take them into account. That is our policy position. He was a consensus leader. He would take on board viewpoints, even if in the initial phase, he might have a different viewpoint. I think that kind of leadership, you would probably be the, you would open a debate, but be the last one to conclude. And in the conclusion, you will then be able to capture the discussions, the viewpoints, and you will always come out with a united position on any matter that you'll be discussing. You will not disagree in a manner that will descend into uh, some kind of rancor with President Mugabe. Never. He had the discipline, he had the ability to bring together different viewpoints and achieve a common objective, a common vision, and a common viewpoint. Uh, despite the successes that were scored during his uh, presidency, uh, the Zimbabwean economy has generally not been performing well uh, for quite some time now, and some of the factors that are attributed to the slow growth can be traced back to his presidency. What key issues do you think that they impeded good governance, particularly in the ministries that you headed? Well, they have been, you know, very important uh, issues that have actually affected the Zimbabwean economy. And I think we've got to be honest about it. The, uh, the DERA, for instance, the sanctions bill has to a very large extent affected um, the overall performance of the government. 
Why do I say this? Because, for instance, in the Ministry of Local Government, Public Works and National Housing, USAID, as well as the World Bank, were major funders of uh, Urban One, Urban Two, and so forth. But the moment sanctions were placed on our country, it made it very difficult for that support, which we were receiving then in terms of infrastructure, development in the urban centers, and so forth. So one wants to look at it and say, okay, what did this mean in the local government sector? It slowed down uh, some of the key infrastructure projects, water projects and so forth. It also affected um, sectors like environment, uh, the tourism sector became a victim of some of these um, uh, sanctions and measures that were placed on our country. But all that being said, and all that also being looked at, we still believe that uh, there are also other areas to do with corruption that we had to tackle on our own. And this also did affect the smooth flow as well as growth of our economy. And that obviously has impeded Zimbabwe's uh, development over the past, call it 20 years. Just a week ago, I think uh, Zidera did uh, talk about 20 years of sanctions on Zimbabwe. It's not a small matter. It's a very, very important issue. We need our country out of this um, uh, punitive set of sanctions against it so that we can rebuild and reboot our economy. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we need to ensure that the level of corruption, the concern that we have, uh, people abusing our national resources, these should be nipped in the bud so that we can overall have a Zimbabwean economy that grows to cater for the thousands and thousands of our citizens who today do not live in the country because of the prevailing difficulties in our, in our nation. I do believe that uh, we need to do as much work as we can to try and reduce corruption and promote efficient administration uh, in our governance structure so that we can promote growth. So now, apart from the sanctions, uh, do, do you recall any technical or administrative kind of challenges that you faced as a minister uh, in trying to push you know, legislation and policies that you advocated for? Yeah, I think, I'll, for instance, um, uh, give us an example, the indigenization, economic empowerment legislation. It's one of those pieces of legislation which fell victim to the overall perception of our country uh, insofar as uh, the world's viewpoint, uh, various political entities in our country, players who were, I think, uh, a bit tired after the land reform challenges. They would obviously want to look at it and say, uh, this kind of legislation will impede growth, will impede. There was a lot of um, misunderstanding of what we're intending to do. And so these obviously uh, fell victim to that polarization in our country, uh, the negative uh, energy, I think, that we tend to put in place on ourselves. Um, there will be obviously quite also a number of other pieces of legislation that fell victim um, to the, call it the inability of us as citizens and as a nation to come together and focus on matters that can change the destination of our nation. The majority of the piece of legislation that we operate under today need to be reviewed. The mining laws, for instance, these have also fallen victim to the extent that since 1961, the piece of legislation that we are running with today is still the same. And how does that legislation protect communities? How does that legislation protect the citizens of our country? How does it bring wealth and empowerment to our people? These are some of the uh, you know, areas that certainly require serious attention. Are there things that you feel that you could have done better to try and manage the indigenization policy or any other policies that you pursued in other sectors of, of government, the ministries that you headed? Well, in hindsight, there will always be 
you know, a view that perhaps if we've done the following, but what doesn't change is the objective. What doesn't change is the goal. What doesn't change is the fact that the current structure must be looked at so that it benefits the majority of our people. You can't continue in the extractive system and structure that lacks transparency, that is not um, uh, understood by the majority of our people. Not to the the fact that we need lots of investment into our country, but there has to be clarity um, when it comes to some of these things. And uh, I'll still say yes, uh, there are things that we could have done differently, we could have managed differently, but I have said, and I'll still say, one of the things that we must overcome as citizens of our country is build consensus, build unity of purpose, and move our agenda forward as a United Nation, as a United people. And it is argued that you were part of uh, the Generation 40 or G40 faction of ZANU-PF that was dismantled after the 2017 military coup d'etat that deposed President Robert Mugabe. What was your relationship like with the current president, Mr. Emerson Monangagwa, like throughout your political career? Let well, I think it was uh, a respectful relationship uh, with colleagues in government, uh, in the party. Uh, he was a senior colleague, admittedly, and but we worked uh, as members of the party, uh, pursuing the objectives of the party. And uh, for all intents and purposes, we did not know, obviously, some of the things that then ob obtained and happened in 2017 and the subsequent uh, position that uh, they hold to this day. But as far as I'm concerned, <clears throat> we work together as citizens of uh, the country, we work together as ministers, as uh, fellow party members, as members of the political, to advance the objectives of the party at that given period in time. Do you, how much do you think President Mugabe knew about the factional battles that we obtaining in the party? when the coup happened? He was very well aware of the factional battles. He was very well aware of the jostling for power. He was very well aware of um, the maneuvering that was happening. In fact, he called it the shenanigans that were the movements that were taking place within the party. And to a very large extent, I think it's um, uh, one of those episodes or one of those uh, when you look back and say, was this the best way of ending our matters and issues? And I think you have a big no as an answer. We should not have done so. Uh, to the extent that his removal was very tragic, was very sad. It should not have been the way we process uh, the leadership of our country. That is not the way we should be able to handle issues. And uh, perhaps going forward, we need to have a very different you know, um, way of resolving differences, challenges, and respect the rules, one of the party, the rules of the country, so that we can be able to always lend our country in a legalistic manner that looks into the future, not one that disrupts the country and its people. The, the ouster of uh, G40 faction it has been interpreted by many people as a development that actually showed that the body polity of Zimbabwe is not ready to accommodate young people to assume roles of political leadership. Do you foresee any prospects of uh, inclusive participation of young people being promoted by older folks or being prom promoted generally by the system? One thing that you can't deny and you can't stop is that time is always moving. One thing constant is that time will always move. So you can stop. In fact, all you can do is probably affect the progress, but going forward, you cannot stop the march to a new leadership, to a new dispensation, to a new generation to who will be able to discharge and run with the affairs of the state going forward. You can 
for some time, delay that, but it's an eventuality. Um, I think young people obviously would want to play their role. They have ambitions, they have uh, a desire to make a difference. And I think it will come sooner rather than later. They'll have to play their part. Uh, my last question for you is uh, to do with the national and central politics. Some time ago, the current Minister of Home Affairs, Mr. Kazembe Kazembe, appeared on television denouncing you against your leadership. A lot has been written and a lot has been said about that issue and, you know, the factional battles in the party. Do you, do you have any personal differences or do you believe that uh, he has personal differences or different viewpoints about you and how you may have uh, handled yourselves in the party before uh, you left in 2017? You'll be making a very tragic mistake if you personalize politics. Politics is everywhere. Politics is ubiquitous. So you can't say it's Kazemba who did that, so and so who did that. Politics happens every time. What happened then and what will happen in the future cannot be blamed on an individual, let alone carry that burden to say, I blame so and so on for my predicament. Politics by its nature. Is a very rough game. So don't go into it if you want to be cry baby. You must be prepared to take punches. You must be prepared to fall, but you must be prepared to rise. So I have nothing personal with Kazembe. He Kazembe Kazembe, he's a politician. He saw an opportunity. He did what he had to do. There could have been influences that made him do what he did, but that's politics. So I, at a personal level, will never personalize and hate any individual for politics. Because I think also in my journey, I might have had one or two people. So you must understand, politics remains politics. Never personalize it. Uh, I'm afraid we are running out of time, but uh, I'm glad you have made time to appear on this talk show. Viewers and listeners, this was Mr. Sevia Kasukuere. He served in the government of Zimbabwe as minister of local government rural development and national housing. He had previously served as Minister of Youth Development, Indigenization and Economic Empowerment and Minister of Environment, Water and Climate. Much of his works can be accessed on the links that I'm going to paste right in the description panel on the upload for this video. Follow this series, Working with President Robert Mugabe and Inside the Perspective, as we are going to come with more. Subscribe and hit the notification button and our Facebook page. Thank you so much, Mr. Minister, and have a good day. Thank you. Wonderful.